Okay, so uh, we have um, examined how in the short run we determine equilibrium in the economy by focusing on the demand side. We organize the economy in different markets. The goods market, the financial market, and then we determine equilibrium conditions in those markets so that in the end we can have the overall uh, equilibrium having brought in the, the supply side, looking at the labor market and production. For now, we're going to focus on the uh, determination of equilibrium in the financial market. Um, I want to, first of all, it will be useful to um, clarify a few concepts that we're going to use in this segment. One is money. What do we, mean, what do we understand by money? In this segment, what we understand by money is liquidity, which means uh, currency, banknotes, coins, but also checkable deposits, checks, traveler's checks, the, the means that you can use readily to settle transactions. That's, that's what we call money. But there is also an, uh, a similar, I mean, related concepts which are not the same. One is wealth. Wealth is not the same as money. Wealth is, money is one of the elements of wealth. Because in wealth you have liquidity, which is money, but you also have non-liquid assets. Your, your bonds, your stocks, you can, and also your non-financial assets, real estate, and so on. So wealth is a broader concept than money. How about income? Income, we understand income as the revenue which is generated from utilizing our capital, whether it is our human capital or our financial capital. If I, uh, when you go to work, you generate, your in, you generate your labor income. When you, in, when you invest in, in assets, you also get interest income. So, but it's, inter it's the income that allows you to buy assets to accumulate wealth. So w income comes from the utiliza utilization of, of your capital to build up wealth. And once you have wealth, there are different ways of, of holding wealth, one being money. Um, so wealth is a bigger comp uh, concept than money, <coughs> which is a subset of, of, um, of, of wealth. And the other subset is bonds. And then you have other. So what now do we mean by demand for money? If, you, if I was to ask you what is your demand for money, what does it mean? In this course, uh, what we mean by demand for money is when we say what is your demand for money, we try to understand how much of your wealth do you hold here as opposed to say here? How much cash every week, every month do you, do you keep relative to the other ways in which you could, you could have saved, uh, uh, kept your, your wealth? So when we say, f when we say um, demand for money, it means the fraction of your wealth that you, kept, that you keep in cash. So what is the fraction of wealth held in liquid form? That's what we mean by demand for money. Now the question is, what are, what are the determinants or the motivations for holding money? The reason we, this question is interesting to ask is, or at least it's not trivial, is that if you keep $100 here as money, how much are you earning? No, no interest. You earn no interest. In fact, you are losing money because as you are not earning interest, 
inflation is is is, is going up. Price levels are uh, the price levels going up. So every month you lose the equivalent of the inflation rate. So it's costly for you to keep money here, to keep your wealth here. That's why we we ask, why are you keeping money? Uh, um, so there must be a motivation why you would want to sacrifice returns from investment by keeping your wealth in the form of liquidity. One, um, one motivation for money demand is transactions. When you go to the store and you're buying uh, groceries and clothing, you need to settle those with uh, some form of uh, means of payment. And universally, cash, liquidity, is the best means of settling uh, payments. Sign a check, issue, uh, give, give, uh, give uh, liquidity. So one of the reasons why we, we hold money is because we want to, we need it to settle transactions. So it's the best means of payments. Now, of course, it will depend on your income. The more income you have, the more cash you'll keep in your in your in your in your money box here. Certainly, um, lower. People with lower income are going to have less, less, keep less cash than people with higher income because they consume uh, less. But this is also going to be the, the influenced by the, the price level. Because the, if you live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an area where the cost of living is high, then you must keep a larger fraction of your wealth in cash. So that's the first motivation. The second is we never know what the future holds for us. So for, for, the, for precaution, we need to keep some cash at hand. Because if you, if, you put, if you were to put everything in bonds and real estate and so on, and then you need to go to the grocery store or you need to go to the hospital, you will, be in, you'll, you'll have difficulty uh, converting all these non-liquid non, non assets into, into cash for you to, to be able to settle your payments. So because the future is uncertain, we, we, we tend to keep some of the wealth in cash. Of course, the more income you have, the more you keep, but also it depends on expected prices. The last reason for why people hold cash is for speculation. What do we mean by speculation? Is the, what we mean by speculation is trying to move your wealth or your assets between one form and another so you can get uh, interest income. Now, people will buy a particular, move m their wealth from, say, money to, to bonds if they expect to make money out of bonds. So it's important to understand why would one put their money into bonds. So let's focus on the three, uh, on the four concepts. Or yield. When you buy a bond, you are counting on making money out of the bond. The bond comes with a face value. But today you're going to pay a price to buy the bond. At the end of the year, at the end of the term, if it is a, a one-year bond, five-year bond, at the end of, the, of the, the life of the bond, 
you're going to get income, which we call capital gains or yield, uh, capital gains uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the instrument, which is the difference between the face value and the price you paid today. So that is the yield. So the yield is the difference between the face value of the bond minus and the price of the bond divided by the bond price. Okay? Which means, and you can see that it, since the face value is given, if it's a, if, if it's a 100 bo uh, do dollar bond, it will be 100. You'll get 100. You won't get 110. So if you pay a high price for this bond today in the market, then you get less at the end of, at the, end of uh, the, the, uh, the life of the bond. We can rewrite this uh, equation to um, express the price, the price of the bond in terms of the, uh, of, the, of, the in of the yield, which gives you So the price of the bond today is equal to the face value divided by 1 plus the yield. And you can see already that you, you will ha if, the, if the yield is low, the price is high. If the yield is high, the price is low. If the price is high, the yield is low. If the price is low, the yield is high. So you have a negative relationship between the price of the bond and the yield. Okay, so I should say a, a, low, a low yield means a high price, a high yield means a low price. So now let's go back to the decision to hold money. If you're going to decide to put some of your, your wealth in as cash, to hold it as, as cash, as money, that means you are foregoing the earnings you could have made by putting that wealth in the form of bonds as opposed to cash. So there is an opportunity cost of holding money. And that opportunity cost is higher, the higher the yield. So we expect that if the interest, if the yield in the bond market is high, we expect people to hold less cash. Okay? So money demand is going to be lower. Because with a high yield or low price of the bond, if the bond prices are lower, you would be, you have, uh, you you'll be much better off by investing in the bonds, putting some money in the bonds, so you can collect the high yields. Alternatively, if the price of bond is higher, then you you yeah, you don't want to put your money in in the in in the bond market. You might as well keep it in cash. So a lower a lower interest rate will uh, result in higher money demand. Just because of this trade-off between earning money on your investments in bonds and keeping money at hand for so you can be, be able to to settle the transactions. Again. Keeping your wealth in cash is costly. You forgot the, 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 the returns. But also keeping your money in bonds is not free because you, inc you, you, you forgot the advantages and the, pre and, 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 uh, and the use of the money as a means of uh, settling your payments. So that means that when we look at the relationship between money and, and interest rate or yields, we're going to see that there is a negative relationship. High yield, lower money demand. Low yield, higher money demand. So if we're thinking about a relationship between the two, it will be 
represented by a downward sloping uh, curve. So this is your money demand. This is a holding other things constant, such as income. We would see that a high, say, a high interest rate here would correspond to a low money demand, whereas a lower interest rate will correspond to a high money demand. OK? This is uh, very important for us because then we can determine the equilibrium. So we saw that money demand is going to be a function of, is influenced by interest rate, but it's also influenced by income. I say that the higher the income you have, the more you can afford to keep man, uh, your wealth in cash. You have more means to, keep, to, to hold cash. So if we were thinking about money demand, which is M, let's call it D, MD, but let's uh, think of the real value of money demand, which is MD over P. This is P is the price level. How much can you buy with your, with your money? So the two key factors that we saw that influence the amount of money you're going to hold in, the amount of wealth you're going to hold in cash, which is money demand, is how much income you have. The other one is what is the yield on bonds in the market? How much do you make by investing in the market versus holding cash? That's the interest rate. So money demand is going to be a function of income uh, and interest rate. So if we hold income constant, or for a given amount of income, the relationship is such that high interest rate corresponds to lower money demand, low interest rate corresponds to higher money demand. So there is a negative relationship between money demand and interest rate. This is convenient in, in determining equilibrium in the money market. As in all markets, equilibrium is going to be determined by supply and demand. Money is demanded by the public, the households, and firms. Supply of money comes from the monetary policy authority. It's exogenous. The central bank determines how much money is, is circulating in the economy. So once we have money supply by the central bank and money demand by the public, we can determine equilibrium. And given that money demand, money supply is not influenced by the public, we're going to take it as exogenous, given uh, by, uh, uh, from outside of the analysis, the, the, the system, uh, by the central bank. So equilibrium is going to be determined by, by Money, money demand equals money supply. Okay, so in this, in our diagram, we have money demand here and money supply here. That gives us the equilibrium interest rate. So equilibrium in the in the money market is determined by money demand by the public, money supply by the, the Federal Reserve Bank, the central bank, which gives us equilibrium interest rate. This gives you a, um, a sense of how in the financial market we come to determine equilibrium in, the, uh, in, that, in that market by focusing only on, on, the money, on the money market, even though there are other assets. Because once you have equilibrium in one market, you will have or you must have equilibrium in the other market. Thank you. Good morning.